one of the brilliant things about art and computer generated graphics is that you can do pretty much whatever you want you can make things that are not realistic and you don't even need to conform to the laws of this universe I love the idea of infinite dimensions inside small objects. A little bit like a TARDIS, I suppose, but a lot cooler. So I'm going to show you this technique on a cube, but you don't need to keep this on a cube. You can literally do it on anything that you wanted. So you could maybe do this as like seeing into someone's soul, for example. You know, that would be super cool. So this tutorial is a little bit more complex. It's definitely not for beginners. I'll try and keep it as simple as I possibly can, but you do need a basic understanding of Blender to be able to keep up. So let's start with a cube. You can use the default cube or you can replace it with another cube. It's entirely up to you. And we're going to start out by changing this scene name. We're just going to call this main because we're going to be using multiple scenes, you see. And so we want to keep things nice and organized. And so let's go in to begin with into edit mode. It's going to face select and we're just going to select this loop around around here. So that's alt click in face select mode. Now we're going to press I and then we're going to press I again for individual. And we're just going to make some little windows and we're not going to make them too small. We can uh, just give it a little bit of a border here. Okay so we've got this object with four different panels and let's just quickly rename this to frame just so we keep things nice and organized. And we could perhaps just for aesthetics we can put on a bevel perhaps just give that three segments we'll shade that auto smooth and maybe make it three millimeters and then to shading and harder normals so it just gives us a nice little edge there maybe make it five millimeters okay there we go so straight up we're going to go into the shading tab so we're going to need a base material so we'll rename this one to frame and we need to add another material click on new and we're going to call this holdout and what we need to do is under the surface we need to change the shader that we're using from principled bsdf we want to change this to holdout and then when we come back into edit mode we can select these individual faces here and then we can click on this holdout shader and then click assign and what that's going to do is apply a different kind of shader to to the object which you may not have seen before so what the holdout does is it just doesn't render this this area at all it's just transparent so if you were to render that with transparent background on you'd be able to see through that so this is different from having a transparent glass shader because if we were to put an object in the middle of that you wouldn't be able to see through it It just literally cuts it out of the image and doesn't render anything at all so now what we're going to do is we're going to take all of these faces and we're going to press shift and D to duplicate them and then right click to drop them in the original location and then we're going to press P and we're going to click on selection and this will give us four different panels so let's just hide the main frame for a minute and then go back into edit mode on the panels and let's start from the front face now ultimately you can do this how you want um, you can work on each of these faces individually if you wish that's entirely up to you what I would probably say is keep it simple to begin with and let's get rid of these these three faces here just select them delete them done with and we're going to use this face as the base we need to keep it's really important here that we're keeping this face in exactly this position don't move the origin don't move this face but we can extrude so let's say we want to extrude this a little bit and we can go all the way back here it doesn't matter how far back we go and then we can actually delete this face so we have a, a nice column so now we can see that we've got this cube that is quite clearly too big for the inside of this cube. Now we'll just rename this one to dimension one and then just going to hide that for a minute. What I also want to do is I add in an empty cube and we can just make this a little bit bigger, make that uh, two meters and we're going to add in another empty sphere. Right, five meters and let's rename this to camera parents we'll rename this one to frame parents let's isolate this this um, dimension and come into edit mode we want to take this perimeter here and we want to press e to extrude and then just drop it there with right click and then we can press scale and we can make this just a little bit bigger 
and then we want to extrude it all the way to the back and then we want to press F for a face so we've got this whole kind of we've enclosed the dimension in this box and so we're pressing Control and plus to extend that selection and what we need to do we need to assign this holdout to this section here so we press assign on that and then just make sure that the inside has got the frame texture on there and now what we can do is we can shift D rotate Z 90 shift D rotate Z 90 shift D and rotate Z 90 shift D rotate Z 90 okay cool so we've got all these dimensions in here but clearly they're overlapping one another this would not look good in a render dimension one we in this two dimension two and three dimension four okay so let's unhide our empties so what we want to do is you want to actually create some new scenes for the dimensions so new full copy and we'll call that full copy dim two full copy and three dim four so we've got five scenes now each with a copy of everything inside it so to begin with we'll come to the main scene and we'll just delete all all of them and then we'll come to dimension one we'll, we'll find out which one is dimension one so we'll delete the other ones dimension two delete the other ones and three delete these and finally dimension four all of these now what we want to do as well is we want to come through every dimension and delete these empties because we don't need those well, we do but we're going to do something a little bit tricky and also we want to delete the cube out of each of them as well so go through delete the cube out of all of them just like that so we've got the main scene with our cube and our empties in there of our dimensions pointing in a different direction and perfectly aligned to main cube so if we come back to our main scene what we want to do is we want to select so this is the the two empties so click and what we're going to do is going to press we're going to press Control L, link objects to scene, dim one. Control L, link objects to scene, dim two. Control L, dim three, and finally dim four. And what this has done is it's put all of these empties back into there. And yes, we deleted them, but those were copies, and this is a linked version. So if we change one object in this scene, it will be affected in the other scenes as such. So let's leave that where it is. So now what we need to do is we just need to parent the, the main cube to the empty and then the same for all of the other scenes. Go through each one, control P, control P, and finally control P. So this means now that if we were to rotate this object, everything within all of the scenes is going to move in accordance with empty. So if we needed to animate movement, we just need to animate this. Now remember to keep saving as you're going along. So let's start working on the first dimension. So we can put in, say, let's do um, some UV spheres. And let's make these a little bit smaller. We'll do radius of 0.2 perhaps, shade smooth. And then and let's add a, a rigid body to this. We'll make it active. We'll change the shape to a sphere. And then we can shift D, shift D, shift D. Now, when I press play, they're going to fall through the object. That is absolutely fine. What we need to do is we need to make a collider for it. So come into this object and then we select everything inside. We press shift D, drop it with right click, press P, selection. That'll make it its own brand new object. So we'll call this walls. And then we need to disable the renderer for this. Let's come into the physics tab, click on rigid body click on passive, click on animated, and leave that on convex hull. Then we can just shift P, sorry, control P that to the to the empty there. And then finally, we can just disable that in the viewport. Sorry, my mistake, we don't leave that as convex hull. That's, uh, that's the wrong thing. Um, we need to change that to mesh. Sorry, my mistake. I was forgetting what my colliders do. Okay, so let's try that again. And so there we go, they all drop in there. Now we probably, don't like the idea of them falling out of the end. What we need to do is collider again. We just take this shape here and then fill that with F and then press P, selection, come into object mode, and this will already be parented to this object here because we've just copied it from 
the previous. And we're just going to do the same thing here. Unhide that. We don't need to see it. See those walls. Hopefully that will stop them from falling out. Yes, there we go. Easy mode. So let's go to dimension two. So I'm going to position my 3D cursor just there. And then I think what I want to do is UV sphere. Move that up there. And I'm just going to use some pre-made assets because ultimately the contents don't matter just for demonstration purposes. I'm just gonna make ourselves a little monster, monster creature thing. Okay, so there's a super cute little monster. I really like that monster actually. And then we're just gonna parent this again to this empty here so that when we move this, it moves all around with it and so on and so forth. Right, okay, so we've now done two dimensions. Um, I won't go through the process of adding the others because you know, it's just repetitive and it's wasting your time. Um, what we need to do now is we need to put it all together. If we come to if we come to this main scene and we render this, this is what we see. And you see here how I was talking about the the transparency. What we want to do is we want to come over to the compositing tab and click on this use nodes. And then what we can do is we have this render layers tab here. So we want to shift D to duplicate that. Shift D to duplicate it again. And then we do this for each of the layers that we, for each of the dimensions that we have. So in our case, we would do four dimensions. And we change this from main to dim one, main to dim two, dim three, and main to dim four. And then what we want to do is we want to take this image and we want to search for alpha over. And then we pop this one into the top one. And we take the second one, we pop it into there, duplicate this, pop that into there, and that one into there, and we duplicate again, and then we pop that one into there, into there, and then we do one more. We have this one, into this one, to there. Right, so when we render, what happens is it will render each of these scenes separately. So you'll have five separate renders per frame. So it's going to take a lot longer than a normal render, but when we look at the final result, we can see here that we can see the contents of two of these frames separately. Now this is incredibly dark and we do not want this whatsoever. So let's add some light to the scene. We can do this a couple of ways. So if we come into the world settings and we click on this color tab here and we come to, where are we? Environment texture, some, there is environment texture. We click on environment texture, we click on open, we can actually find a HDRI. Now, I would suggest go to polyhaven.com. I'm using the Studio Small HDRI. These are all free. You can download them. You know, literally just go in, download, save it. You don't have to put your credit card details or anything like that. I don't even think you need an account, actually. You might need an account. I don't think you do. So go grab yourself a HDRI. And then what this will do is it will illuminate the scene. Now, if we render this again, image editor so you can see the rendering. So this HRI has illuminated this one, the outside cube, but it's not illuminated the inside cubes. What we need to do there is we need to come into each of the individual dimensions and follow the same process. Take an environment texture, put it on there, section two to environment texture. There we go. Main F12. And there we can see the light has actually cast into these separate compartments. So that's one way you can do it. Another way, instead of using the HDRIs, change this back to color, change that one back to color. What we can do is we can actually come and edit this box here and then inset this a little, make a strip here, come into our shader tab, add a new material and we'll call that light. And then we can change this shader from principled to a mission and then kind of sign and that gives the whole thing like an internal light source and I, I like that I think that is a, a good way of doing it so it's sort of independent of the light outside now if you wanted to you could add the you know both that's absolutely fine if you wanted to add both to them but I think that having it like this kind of adds a little bit more I think having it like this adds a little bit more to the whole illusion like that mention one with this one we could say we do control R and a load of loops just like this. I need to change that so I can actually see it. Right here, sign that. I can actually make that 
another light, just a different color on it. Green, our balls, they don't have any material, so we'll make these metallic, a little bit darker. I can just click, 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 click. Control L, link materials. Right, so, right, so what I want to do now is we're going to just delete all of the default cameras out of everything except the main scene. I'm just going to go through each of these, delete, delete. So I removed all the cameras out of all the because each of those cameras were individual cameras and we won't link to camera. So we're going to do a similar kind of process. Take the camera and we're going to control L, link objects to scene, dim one, dim two, dim three, dim four. We're going to take this camera, control P, parent it to two empty here. And now we can see in all of the, in all of the other scenes, it's linked to this one empty. So let's do some, a little bit of animation, just a little bit. Um, so we'll take this original um, empty here. So I'll take this original empty here. We'll just keyframe its location and rotation. And then I, I kind of like this cool little trick. Um, it kind of makes things look a little bit more natural in the sort of keyframing it. If we press this record button here and then we press the play button, we can see that the, the playhead is moving, right? I would probably suggest to take these balls, just disable them just for the minute. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on this, we're going to press play, and then we're going to rotate this. So play, and then I'm just going to press double R to rotate, and then I'm just going to move it around just like this, and then boop, 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 and then back again, and da. There we go. So it kind of flicks into place there, so let's just grab that, move it on a little bit. There we go. So when we play this, we can see here how it sort of moves around. It basically imitates the natural movements. And we can just grab all of these keyframes and we can just move them like this, just to sort of get rid of any of the gaps. I don't like the way that jumps there. So we can just edit things. So that one to that one, maybe just delete that. There we go. Right, okay. So we can come and re-enable the balls and we can come then into the rigid body world over here, into the cache. And we can just bake these. So now when we we animate this, you can see how the balls are kind of flying around inside the the thing, which I think is really awesome. And then what we need to do is we need to maybe like rotate the camera around. If we take this camera parent here and we'll rotate this on the Z axis and just sort of bring it to here perhaps. And then we'll press I uh, rotation and then we'll move it on do 240, I think. And then we can rotate Z and it will just move it around to like maybe there. Rota um, then we'll key the keyframe there, or the, we'll key the rotation keyframe on that. So when, when we press play, we'll see it moving around like this. Da, 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 and it will slowly move around to this side. So let's just show you as an example. Let's just render this here. So we can see on this particular frame, this is the balls with the with the light source in there, which is incredibly extra. We do not need that much light in there for sure. And the perfectionist in me says, we need to fix that. I'm into edit mode. We're going to the frame and we're just going to take, I'm just going to take those and we're going to inset those to the really tiny and then we're going to assign it back. Should be, yeah, there we go. A lot nicer and control the light less, I think. And then if we come across to the end of the animation, we render it again. So there we go. We can see that it's getting both of these different perspectives and rendering them and combining them into one image. So now you can go ahead and animate that out. Okay, one last thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, you need to, in your each dimension settings, you need to come up to your render tab and then come down to the film, film section and click on transparent. Otherwise it'll mess up your rendering. It won't look good. But hopefully this has been useful for you or interesting or at least entertaining. Uh, if you um, if you found it useful, then uh, maybe give us a, a like, like uh, or maybe even subscribe. Um, the project files for this tutorial are available in my Discord uh, for members of the channel. So link up above. So if you want to get, uh, get hold of the project files and see how this is actually done, if you can't figure it out for yourself, then you know, you can grab hold of those files. Um, and otherwise, I will see you in the next one.